بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم <تصفيق> الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده سبحانه واستغفره واستهديه نعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له <تصفيق> اخواني اخواتي السلام عليكم ورحمه الله تعالى وبركاته uh, today is a little bit different from other days <coughs> for two reasons uh, upon some request from some brothers and sisters that is to have the weekly class on Friday inshallah after Maghrib instead of Sunday so maybe you, we if we find the majority asking for Friday then we move to Friday inshallah after Maghrib that's number one number two inshallah uh, I would like to congratulate you for the new carpet in the mosque well, I'm asking everybody really to make dua, inshallah, from the, your hearts for the person who donated for them for the carpet. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, give him forgiveness, shower him with mercy, and inshallah, preserve him in this dunya, and then the hereafter, protect him and forgive him for everything, inshallah. He's a nice brother, and he's the one who donated, actually. If he, he, didn't, want, he did, didn't want me to say his name, so let us let, let us keep this between him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, don't forget him in your dua. Number two, now we have to, brothers, put some rules for this. <coughs> uh, I think we talk many times about the cleanness, and the cleanness is one of the signs for every Muslim and Mu'min. The real Mu'min who understands Islam very well of course, he cares about cleanness and he cares about order everywhere he goes. And we have already talked about many, actually, etiquette for the mosque. And there is, there is outside a big sign there written by Sheikh Khalifa a long time ago about the etiquettes of the mosque. And this is printed and outside. I want everybody really to help to keep this place clean and to keep it nice place for worship when we come then we find it clean smells very well in order this is very important and i told you many times that is signs or the order in mosques one of the signs for muslims if others see how you you put your things in order how you, your our mosques are our houses are that shows how we think how our personalities are. If you are a chaotic person, a person who doesn't care, eats anywhere, throw things anywhere, does this reflect good image about you, about Islam? No, it reflects bad image. Bad image. Either we want it or we don't want it. This is what people learn from us. This is what others who are not Muslims, how they see us. So if you keep everything clean and nice, this is a way of da'wah. But it's indirect way for da'wah. And I know some new Muslims, when they come here to become Muslims, when we ask them, men and women, why you want to become Muslim? What is that thing which really starts with, with you to think about Islam? Many of them say, I have, <clears throat> I have known some Muslim friends. They are very nice, very, very kind, so clean. The, I went to their houses, I saw how they live, how they eat, how they put things in the right way. And then I liked it, then this is, that brought them a little bit to Islam. But if they say that is you don't care about anything, then this is a bad, very bad image. And we are here in London, many non-Muslims come to the mosque for different reasons. Some of them come just to learn, some of them come to take something, some of them come to eat. Some of them come for programs. Some of them come just to see us when we pray. And we don't say no. We say, please, welcome. We don't have secrets in Islam, alhamdulillah. You can stand there at the end and you can watch us praying. So I want you, <clears throat> please, to take care and to help me. To help administration, to help imams, to help security people, to help the staff here. First of all, please, brothers, again, I have to repeat to you, when we finish from Isha, we take all the chairs back to the corner. Brothers here, take the chairs back now to the corner after prayer, after Isha. That's one. 
And also when you take the chairs back, remember this is you are doing this for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not because I said it. The mosque is not my own mosque. The mosque is your mosque, it's for all of us. So when you think you, you don't care, don't you think that hurts me? That affects you with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the Prophet sallallahu mentioned in the hadith, if anybody bring out from the mosque even a small tiny dirt, the Prophet ﷺ used the word qadat in the hadith. What is the qadat? The qadat, maybe many, many of Arabs do not know even what the word qadat means. Qadat means, you know when, when someone wakes up in the morning from sleep, then you find a small tiny dirt near your eye. This is the qadat. It's a very small. The Prophet ﷺ said, even if you take this out from the mosque, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for that. What about those who throw, throw tissues, throw clothes, bring sandwiches sometimes, or rice, or, or cooked food? In another hadith of the Prophet ﷺ said, مَنْ أَكَلَ كُرَّاثًا أو, أو, أو ثُومًا أو بَصَلًا فَلَا يَقْرَبَنَّ مَسْجِدَنَا فَإِنَّ الْمَلَائِكَةَ تَتَأَذَّمْ مَا يَتَأَذَّمْ مِنْهُ بَنُوْ آدَمْ From this hadith, he said, he who eats garlic, or lake, then he should not come to the mosque because angels also will be, when they smell something bad, they will be hurt exactly like people. From this we know that is we have to keep our clothes and things decent. We make sure that is our socks, our clothes smell good. Not I come when everything smells actually not good or maybe I come from the workshop or from the kitchen or from anywhere. Then, then I, I don't care about that. So please, from now on, make sure that is no food in the mosque at all. If you see anybody eating in the mosque, say, please go da da downstairs to the restaurant, have a table there, eat there. Mosque is not a restaurant. We need to keep this carpet and to keep the place really tidy and nice and clean. And the smell must be very good. Help also us, help me, help the, the cleaners, Help also Sheikh Rafat, everybody to, you, uh, to, to, to keep it clean. Shoes also, brothers and sisters. Make sure you put your shoes in the right place. Don't just throw them anywhere. This is a kind of order, a kind of disciplinary, discipline, sorry. A kind of discipline. When you come, you put your shoes in the right place. You come inside, you pray, then you go and you take your shoes very cleanly. And you, this, this shows that is how much you are, you, you keep the discipline in your life. Teach children this, this is very important too. You have to teach them that. If you want your children to respect mosques, you have to teach them the etiquette and the, the, the regulations of mosques. Not to talk too loud. Mosques are not ground to play, especially when people are praying. <clears throat> So I'm expecting from every one of you to be like a guardian for the mosque. When you see something wrong, don't be quiet. Draw the attention of the person, brother or sister, what you are doing is wrong. Please take this and take it outside. Take the food outside. Take your shoes, put them in the right place. This is, this is actually what... Uh, also, don't leave any things behind you in the night because the cleaners are going to throw everything from now. And I told you this about two weeks ago. Cleaners now are going to come early in the morning or in the night and to remove everything from the mosque. So if you leave your bag, leave your jacket, leave any private thing, don't expect to find it the next morning. They will throw it in the bin immediately. So please, brother, help me not to leave anything. I don't want you to lose anything. And I want you to keep, keep, take your things with you and bring them to the next morning or the next day. Inshallah, from this we are moving now, inshallah, one step with, with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then your dua and your help also, your donation. We are moving, inshallah, one step to, make air, to have air conditioning here. The last summer was very hot. We would like to be ready, inshallah, before, inshallah, if we, we can, we would like to be ready before the next summer to have, inshallah, air conditioning in the mosque, inshallah. Now we are moving also to the halls to keep to have a new carpet and trying to, air con to have air conditioning also in the halls.
So everywhere, inshallah, the center will be, inshallah, inshallah, much, much better. But all this work will be useless if you don't cooperate. You have to feel this place is like your home. You have to protect it. If you feel, well, I don't care, or maybe I hate the director, so I, I throw my shoes anywhere just because I don't like the director, like me or don't like me, this is another issue. This is not my mosque. This is your mosque and for all of us together. And it is like some people when they come and they request something for zakat, they don't give them the zakat committee for a reason or another, or maybe they gave them already. Then he, some people go to the, go to the toilet to break something there. You think this is will hurt the people of zakat? Well, you are damaging your hasanat. You are damaging your work. You are damaging the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Always remember, this is the house of Allah. We are all guardian for it. You are happy with me or are unhappy, this has nothing to do with, 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 with the mosque itself. Also, I'm advising everybody who has any suggestion or he's, he like to correct something, like something that is, he sees something or she sees something she doesn't like or he doesn't like, come to us and let us know. Open our eyes to it. Maybe we have a reason for it. Maybe there is, there is, there is a reason why we did this and why we didn't do the other one. Maybe we don't know and you are drawing our attention to it, inshallah. So we have, inshallah, a lot of ideas. We are moving to them. Some brothers also in the mosque here, they talk to me about ex extension of the mosque, that side and that side. Of course, this is a very big project. We have already put drawing for it, alhamdulillah. Of course, and then we have to go to the consul if the consul agree, Allahu alam. We, we, we have to try with the consul all, all the time to, if this happen, inshallah, then we will have extension this side and that side. And inshallah, we will keep the mosque as it is because the mosque is listed. Then if Friday, then we can open it from here and we open it from here. If this happen, and inshallah, it's going to happen, inshallah, inshallah. So little by little, we are moving. It's with your help, We're with your, uh, how can I say, uh, disciplinary guidance and disciplinary guardian. Guard, you have, to, you have to always really follow us and, and be with us and advise and correct the people who are wrong. You have some people, they come to the mosque for the first time. The mosque here is in the heart of London. So every day and every time you want to pray, you will find somebody new. This new person or new sister doesn't know about your regulations, our regulations, doesn't know about the place. Then maybe he or she, with good intention, does something wrong. So it's our duty to draw the attention. Brother, gently, of course, we don't want to fight with some people inside the mosque, but gently giving advice. Brother, may Allah forgive us all. Don't do that. Do this, do this. Brother, keep your children quiet because we are in the mosque. People are praying. Brother, you have to teach your children to, be, to, be, to, to respect the discipline, to respect the order. Brother, keep the place clean. Don't eat here. Brother, it's not allowed to do this here. So this is little by little, people will learn from you. People will learn. And as I said to you, as long as you are seeking for knowledge, you are in the right way in all your life. As long as you, you feel it's enough, I don't want to seek for any knowledge, knowledge, you are in danger. The Prophet ﷺ in the hadith said, Man salaka tariqan yaltamisu fi ilman, sahal Allahu lahu tariqan ila al-jannah. He who go in a way or a path or seeking for knowledge, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will facilitate for him another path for Jannah, for paradise. All our life is a journey for knowledge. It's all the life. جميع حياتنا هي رحلة في طلب العلم. في اللحظة التي تعتقد أنت أنك لا تحتاج إلى طلب العلم فأنت على خطر عظيم. طلب العلم يأتي بعدة طرق. يأتي بالجلوس إلى 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 العلماء. يأتي بمتابعة الدروس يأتي بالقراءة يأتي بالتعلم قليلا قليلا المهم أن تكون متابعا most important seeking knowledge all the time and when you learn something you catch it try to practice it and by the way many people do not know about this now <clears throat> memorizing the Quran for example it is a very good virtue that is for everybody to write, memorize the Quran this is something, of course, a dream of every Muslim. That is, one day he can memorize the whole Quran. This is very important. But 
What is even more important is to practice it, to practice the Quran. It's not only memorizing the letters, it's also to practice it. To know what is halal and what is haram in the Quran. Try to implement this in your life. This is the most important. كثير من الناس يعتقد أن حفظ القرآن الكريم هو غاية أن أنه حفظ القرآن لا شك أنه مزية وهو مزية لكل مسلم وكل مسلم في الدنيا يتمنى أن يأتي يوم يحفظ القرآن الكريم ولكن ما هو أحيانا أشد من ذلك وأهم هو أن تكون مطبقا للقرآن أما إذا كنت تحفظه ولا تطبق منه شيئا يكون شاهدا عليك يوم القيامة تطبيق القرآن تطبيق الحلال والحرام ومعرفته والأمانة فيه والصدق فيه هذا هو هذا هو هذا هو الهدف من القرآن الكريم ليس الهدف فقط هو أن تردد الحروف and if you just memorize the Quran and you don't practice it at all you don't follow it the Quran itself will be a witness against you in the day of judgment سيكون القرآن شاهدا على من لا من لا من من يهجره وسيكون شاهدا على من لا يطبقه Quran will be witness for those who know the Quran, but they don't do it. And we all know that is in the day of judgment, the Prophet ﷺ told us someone will be thrown, a man will be thrown in the, in the hellfire. Then people in the hellfire will ask him. They said, oh, you are the one who used to teach us. You are the one who used to tell us in dunya about what we do, what we shouldn't do. How come you come here in the hellfire? You're supposed to be the best among all of us. What was the answer of the man? He said, I was teaching you and asking you not to do the bad things, but I used to do them. And I tell you to do the good things, but I used not to do them. I tell you to do the good, but I don't do it. I tell you not to do the bad, but I do the bad. Then يقول, كنت آمركم بالحلال فلا آتي وآنهاكم عن الحرام فآتي. هذا في الحديث. وهو الرجل الذي يلقى في النار. فيقول له الناس يا فلان ألم تكن تعلمنا ألم تكن تقول كذا ألم تكن تقول كذا في الدنيا فيقول نعم كنت أمركم بالحلال ولا آتي وأمركم بالحرام وأنهاكم عن الحرام فآتي معنى هذا أنه يعرف ولكن لا يطبق knowledge itself is not enough practice is the is 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 the is the result the result is the most important now we know some some non-Muslim they read the Quran they study Islam they know even sometimes about some aspects in Islam even more, more than some of us. But this is useless in the day of judgment. It will be against them. Because you know the truth and you don't follow it. ولكنه لا يؤمن بالله العظيم ولا يتبع القرآن ولا يتبع الحديث هذا يوم القيامة يكون شاهدا عليه ولا يكون شاهدا له لأن الله تعالى سيسأله يقول علمت وعرفت ورأيت القرآن ودرست وبلغتك الدعوة ماذا فعلت أين الجواب أين الإيمان الله سبحانه وتعالى will ask him in the day of judgment you have studied I gave you the ability to study you read the Quran you read the hadith the truth was very 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 highlighted in front of you. It's, it's open. The way is open for you. What did you do with this? Nothing. Then all these things will be against you, not for you. So it's not only reading and having the knowledge. It is having the knowledge and practice it. Practice the knowledge. Some people, because of this dunya, they focus on the knowledge itself. Because the more knowledge you have, the more people respect you. The more people say, MashaAllah, he knows this, he knows this, he knows this. This is one of the tricks of the devil, of the shaitan. He will push you to this, to this, to be like known, to be famous. People will come to you, but what is between you and your heart and Allah? This is the real thing. This is the one you, this is the point where you stop and study it. You have to be aware about these tricks, small tricks of the shaitan. And we talk in one of our old speeches about the shirk al-khafi, the hidden shirk, we talk about shirk al-asghar, the minor shirk. I talk about this, explain them one time. Remi remind you all the time of that. And as I told you always, the real mu'min who knows the Islam very well, his heart is always, always struggling, having some fears. 
where, are, where am I standing? Where am I standing? Where am I now? Everything you do it, you have intention. Avoid something bad, have intention for the sake of Allah. Do something good for the sake of Allah. Even if you are invited, for example, for dinner or lunch or whatever, for example, take it in your mind as a sunnah because the Prophet ﷺ, when he is invited for, for, for invitation for food, he comes, then I go for this invitation because I follow the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. So remember the sunnah all the time. الإنسان المسلم يتذكر السنة في كل شيء حتى إن بعض الناس قد يدعى للغداء والعشاء فيتذكر ما في حديث النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أن الدعوة إجابة الدعوة خاصة في وليمة العرس أنها واجبة فيستجيب اتباعا لسنة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم Maybe you go to visit somebody in the mosque I remember I visit because the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said to me this I would go to do it I'll go to fix this problem among friends because Allah سبحانه وتعالى wants me to do it إصلاح البين The moment you think you are safe, this is very dangerous. The moment you think you are okay, everything is in your life is okay, everything between you and Allah is okay, ah, you have to be very careful. This is also another one trick. This is another trick. Even shaitan sometimes come to some people say, okay, you, every night you pray, tonight have rest, why not? And it, it will not affect one night among many nights or whatever. You are praying, alhamdulillah, all the time. You don't need to pray sunnah. You have to be very careful with that. This, these are the tricks of the shaitan. Shaitan is always trying to push you away, push you away. Shaitan, you howl daim and you say, أكثر شيء قتل به الشيطان عباد الله هو التسويف. This is one of the, يعني, أكبر سلاح للشيطان في الحياة هو التسويف. التسويف. كل ما أردت أن تفعل شيء, قال الشيطان, غدا أحسن, تركه غدا. تريد أن تذهب لزيارة قريب يقول الشيطان اليوم الوقت متأخر اذهب غدا أحسن تريد تتصدق يقول الشيطان لا ليس الآن اجعله غدا أفضل يكون ربما يكون عندي أكثر من المال وأعطي أكثر من هذا تريد أن تزور أختك أو أمك أو قريبك المريض أو صديقك ثم يقول الشيطان ليس الآن نجعله في نهاية الأسبوع أفضل هل تعلم أنك ستعيش نهاية الأسبوع هذا التسويف من أكبر أسلحة الشيطان مع الناس معنا كلنا التسويف سوف نفعل سوف نفعل سوف نفعل ويظل الشيطان يمد لك بالأمل وربما لا تعرف أن الأجل قريب أقرب من الأمل تريد تتصدق تريد تكتب وصية في وقف أو شيء مثلا للخير يقول لك ليس الآن فيما بعد نفعل إذا كبرنا في السن وكذا وتظل تؤجل ثم لا تدري أن الموت قد يسبق كل ذلك فانتبهوا لهذا السلاح الخطير. Delaying things is one of the, the biggest open, uh, weapons of the, of the devil, shaitan. Delay. You want to give sadaqah, the shaitan says to you, no, don't do it today, do it tomorrow, it's better, maybe you will have more money. You want to go to visit your sister or somebody who is ill at home, shaitan says to you, today is too late, let's do it tomorrow, ahsan. Let's do it in the weekend, you have more time. I want to do late. Delaying, delaying, and you don't know how long you are going to live. Maybe you are not living even till tomorrow. We know just last two weeks, and I ask, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I ask you please to, uh, to make dua for them. Two of our friends, we lost them in last weeks. One of them is Prince Muhsin. You know Prince Muhsin who used to come to pray with us Friday? Suddenly he died, just last week. Rahimahullah. Lamir Muhsin, can you salli ma'ana huna? توفي الأسبوع الماضي. Lord Sheikh, member of the House of Lords, about ten days ago, he was here with us in the center. Here, he came to us. The next morning, he died. They called me. They said he died. He was in evening with us here. He was sitting with us in the meeting room. He was laughing. He had with us coffee and tea, everything. But the moment when the moment comes, nobody knows when it's going to happen. And it's all in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And everybody, Allah knows when you are going to deliver everything. Khalas. If you ask just one minute delay, it will not be possible. This is the time. And in the hadith of the Prophet this is important for all of us, those who are old. قَدْ أَعْذَرَ اللَّهُ إِلَىٰ رَجُلٍ أَمْهَلَهُ حَتَّى بَلَغَ السِّتِينَ قد أعذر الله إلى رجل أمهله حتى بلغ الستين الله سبحانه وتعالى 
gave enough time for everybody till he reached the age of 60 of his time. When you reach age of 60, 60, you don't have excuse. No excuse for somebody who, who actually safely arrive or reach the age of 60. The Prophet ﷺ went from this to say that is, this is long time enough to be wiser, to correct yourself, to follow the good things. You are not teenager like 15, 16 years. We say, okay, he's still young. He doesn't understand. She doesn't know. She doesn't know about this. She hasn't learned about this. He hasn't learned about this. Now, if you reach 40, 40, actually 30, scholars say 30 is the mid age. You are in the middle. When you reach 30, you are in the middle. When you reach 40, this is the mature time. This is what they The peak, 40. Then if you till say 60, that means Allah gave you enough time. You should really be careful. If he gives you also till 80, this is even more. That's why in the hadith of the Prophet said, خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ طَالَ عُمْرُهُ وَحَسُنَ عَمَلُهُ The best among you, all of you, are those who live longer and they do better. Better do hasanat. Of course, the result of this is the worst among all of you are those who live longer and do worse. هذا معناه أن خشركم من طال عمره وساء عمله. And in another hadith of the Prophet ﷺ said. ما من إنسان يموت أو ما من مرؤ يموت إلا ندم إن كان قد أحسن ندم أن لا يكون ازداد وإن كان قد أساء ندم أن لا يكون أقلع أو تاب هذا حديث everybody when the moment he or she die he or she will will regret everybody will regret so much if he, ha if he or she has done good things in his life, he will regret why he didn't do more. Why didn't I do more in my life? Why did I do only little if they are good? If he or she had done bad things, he will regret because he didn't do good things. So regret is always there. Either if you are a good or a bad, you will regret the moment. In another hadith of Prophet hadith akhar yaqul, الناس نيام فإذا ماتوا انتبهوا انظروا إلى هذا الحديث هذا عجيب جدا هذا من أعجب ما يكون هذا الحديث وكل كلام النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بليغ وعجيب من أعجب ما يكون بعد القرآن لا يوجد في اللغة العربية في أبلغ من النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كلامه عجيب جدا كلامه عليه الصلاة أوتي جوامع الكلم يقول المعاني الكثيرة في عبارة قليلة جدا look at this حديث الناس نيام فإذا ماتوا انتبهوا the best actually saying in, in all Arabic language after the Quran is of course the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. His texts and sayings are the best in language in Arabic. The highest of course text in Arabic ever is the Quran. There is no, nothing higher than the Quran. Then the second one is the Prophet ﷺ. And one of the unique things about the Prophet and this is for, for all those especially young generation he says a few words with big meaning. Yani the Prophet ﷺ, not his, it's not our way. When we want to talk about something, we talk too much. We repeat too much. No, no, no. He squeezed the whole thing in a few words. When you think of it and you read it, you find, subhanAllah al-Azim, he covers the whole, the whole subject. In his hadith, he said, People are sleeping. Look at this. Think of it. It's very deep, very deep. People are sleeping. When they die, they wake up. Look at that. Subhanallah al -Azim. People are sleeping. When they die, they wake up. How come? What does he want? What does he want to say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? He wants to say, people in this dunya, like sleeping people, they don't know. They forget everything. When you sleep, you don't know about the things around you. You are busy with your sleeping, with your dreams. It's this dunya. 
Everything you see it in your dreams, it's not true. It's illusions. Thinking in your consciousness. When they wake up, فَإِذَا مَا تُنْتَبَهُ When they die, they wake up. When you die, you will see the, the reality. You will see the truth. You will realize immediately that is you haven't done enough in your life. This is the reality. It's exactly like someone who is sleeping. Then when you wake up, when your wife or your sister or somebody in your family wakes you up, now this is the end of all the dreams, end of everything. Now you see the reality. The reality, the room, your family with you, this is real. Now this is it. Now you'll see your good deeds or your bad deeds in front of you. This is the meaning. People are sleeping. When they would die, they wake up. Wallahi, this hadith, when you think of it, nothing will has value, will have value in your eyes. You will not think of money, you will not think of everything. Everything it does, it's, it doesn't worth, doesn't worth to do all the bad things in our life. Jazakumullah khairan. And I wanted today just to talk, but then little by little we expanded the subject, actually. And I wanted to, today, I meant to talk only about the new carpet and the new order and thank you all of you for your patience and asking you for your dua for the person who donated Jazakallah khairan ask also your dua for all those who really are helping us in, um, yourself and others and please be with us together so inshallah we will have this place to be inshallah not only a place of worship but a place of worship a place of knowledge a place where we learn and we can give spread Alhamdulillah, teaching Islam to everybody. And Alhamdulillah, with the barakah and the blessing of Allah, we have, every day we have new Muslims. Every day. Many of them come because they visited the mosque. Many of them come because they had good friends. Many of them come because they attended a class here. Many of them come because they read, they read, they read a book. Anyway, it's an individual choice. But we respect and we are so happy for everybody really to come to see the truth that is we have seen alhamdulillah rabbil alameen with the grace of allah as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yaghfir li wa lakum wa an yu'allimana wa yanfa'ana bima 'allamana wa an yahfazana wa yahfaz dhurriyyatina wa yahfaz 'alayna 'aqulana wa abdanana wa amwalana wa awladana wa as'aluhu subhanahu wa ta'ala wa huwa al-'aziz al-ghafur al-wadud al-karim al-rahim an yahfaz jami' al-muslimin fi kulli buldan wa an yunir lahum tariqahum وأن يوحد كلمتهم وأن يجمع قلوبهم على الحق وأن يؤلف بين قلوبهم وبين قلوبهم ويزيل أضغانهم وأن يعود عليهم بالأمن والسلام والخير بدل الحروب والفتن والبغضاء والضغينة وأسأله سبحانه وتعالى أن يحبط كيد أعدائهم وأن يحمل حافيهم وأن يطعم جائعهم وأن يكسو عاريهم وأن يشفي مريضهم وأن أن يعود بالهد بالهداية على الظلال من على الظالم منهم وكما أسأله سبحانه وتعالى يصلي بأفضل صلاة وأزكى تسليم على نبيه الكريم وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين وعلى صحابته الغر المنتخبين وعلى أزواجه الطاهرات وعلى جميع المؤمنين والمؤمنات المسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات من حضر في مجلسنا هذا ومن غاب إنه على كل شيء قدير وصلى الله وسلم على نبي محمد والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته تنسى تاخذ الكرسي بعد الصلاة. تفضل تفضل. جزاك الله خيرا معاملتك.